Previously, we cut the top and bottom pieces to our cushion, and the cut dimensions are 17 by 12 and a half. And we have two pieces, and you may recall that I put a notch in the center of one of the long sides on each one. And that notch tells me that this is the back of the cushion, and this is where we're going to start applying our piping. Before we put it on the sewing machine, let's just take a look at what we're going to do. There's that notch, and I'm going to place my piping so that there's about two inches of piping on this side. I'm not going to be sewing that right now. I'm going to start my sewing where this notch is. So just to keep that in place while we take it to the machine, I'm going to put a little pin right there. We're going to go around this cushion cover top with our piping, go all the way around, and then when we come to this end, we're going to join this. That's why it's important to have a little piece that's left over. After we finish this, we're going to do the same thing for the bottom cover of our cushion. Now I've kept that channel foot on the machine because it works very well too for putting the piping smoothly onto your cushion cover. So there's that notch. Let's slide it into the channel foot. I like to hand walk a stitch or two. and start sewing. Now you want to make a nice turn at the corners. But you see what happens when I try to turn it, the lip curls under. That tells us we need to put a little snip here to make that turn go smoothly. I'm just going to make a diagonal snip, not to the stitch line, but close to it. When I sew, I'm going to bring my needle to this point and leave it down and then turn. Lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric and the piping. You may need to lift your presser foot just to get that turn. And now you see we have a, a smooth corner on our cushion top. Let's try the next one. The corner. We're going to put a diagonal snip the end of the snip is at the turning point. So we approach the corner, hand walk it if necessary, leave the needle into the fabric, raise your presser foot, pivot the fabric. You may need to raise that presser foot a little bit more if you have an old machine like mine. Sometimes you just need to work it a little bit. There we go. Now, and again, we have a nice turn for a cushion cover. We're anticipating that turn again. A diagonal snip that ends where the needle is going to pivot. Needles down, raise your presser foot, turn the fabric. Get that cording settled back down into that channel. There we go. Again, one more corner, diagonal snip. 
make sure that you don't get too close to the stitching. That's maybe slightly more than an eighth of an inch, almost a quarter. Your needle's down at the point where you want to make the turn. Pivot the fabric. Press your foot in the highest position. There we go. Now we're reaching the point where our piping needs to be joined. Let's go a little bit more. Here we go. Here's the notch where we started, and we have a couple of inches of cording that's free and clear. Now here's the end that we're, we want to join. So let's trim that so that it is about a half an inch from the spot where we started. So you have about that much overlap. Now the piece that's on top we're going to open up our stitching. So that we can expose that cording underneath. And let's lay it sideways to the cording where we started. And with a pencil, we're going to make a little mark. We want to cut the exposed cord here and the covered end of the cording here. Now you see the cording butts up against one another and meets smoothly. Then take this extra piece that we have left over and fold it in, covering the join and then stitch that down. So what you see now is a nicely done smooth join in the back with a little little seam right there and we're ready to do the next one just like this <laughs>